what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? Rosemont Police, the authorities have closed the case into the Kanika Jenkins murder. Well, they say it wasn't a murder. They say it was accidental. They say they could not find any other conclusion other than it was accidental. However, the lawyers for Kanika Jenkins' mother says that the post-mortem photograph that they released on Friday raises more questions than answers. And they want more information. They believe that the authorities are holding back on information. Now, here's the deal. These uh, photographs that they released, they were of uh, personal, they were of indecent nature. I didn't think that they would release those photos like that. I thought that maybe we see something, but not the way that they sent those photos out. They showed everything. Now, what caught me off guard about the photos, and and and, I'm, and I agree with the with the with the lawyers. It really raises a lot of questions. When you see the photos, they have uh, one photo that shows Kanika Jenkins laying on the floor inside of the walk-in freezer, and she have her the shirt that's under her jacket is pulled over her breast. That seems strange to me. What also seems strange is that she had one shoe off and she had blood on her foot. She also, it appeared that she had hair on her thumb. If you look at the photos, you can look them up online. It looks like she has like a, a lock of hair on her thumb, almost indicating that maybe she was involved in some type of struggle. I don't trust the people out there in Rosemont. They were acting too suspicious from the jump. They were not forthcoming with the information about uh, the surveillance footage. They were confrontational and standoffish towards the family, especially the mother. I mean, they wasn't accommodating to this woman at all. And also the people at the Crown Plaza Hotel. They were acting very suspicious from jump. You would think that a mother who was looking for her child, now this was before, of course, they found her body. She came up missing, what was it, September 10th. And 20, 21 hours later, her body was found inside the walk-in freezer of the Crown Plaza Hotel. The mother shows up and the, the people that work at the hotel is treating her like she's a criminal. This is a mother that is grieving. This is a mother that is worried about her daughter, like trying to find her daughter. And they're treating her like a criminal. And then when they discovered the body, they became even more obnoxious. They became even less accommodating to the mother. I don't trust them. This hotel also has a back history of being involved in ha uh, organ harvesting. There's stories out there about this hotel already. I wouldn't be surprised. 
I'm no conspiracy theorist. By far, I mean, I'm like, I'm not one of those people that every time something happens, oh, it can't be a natural occurrence. It always has to be some type of conspiracy. It always has to be some type of extra going on. No, I'm not that type of person. But this just seems very suspicious from, from Jump Street. This, just, this is just not something, I mean, just this is one of those common sense type things. And I know they're trying to make it, you know, I know some people, once they hear from the authorities, that's good enough for them. <laughs> I don't understand it with all of the crooked people that's in law enforcement in America and all the crooked people that work in the medical examiner's office with all of the stories y'all heard in the past, I don't know how you could just automatically take their word for it. I don't know why you do it, but you do it. I don't understand it, but I would be very suspicious. And like the, the mother said that they, they the mother and the attorney said they're going to do their own investigation. They said that they were going to do their own autopsy. I guess I don't know what happened with that. But they really need to do their own investigation into this because, look, I've, I've been around a number of, of cases where death was involved. And you know, I've seen my fair share. This is just one of those type of situations that you just be like, man, they killed that girl. They killed that baby. That baby did not walk inside that damn walk-in cooler or freezer unaccompanied. She didn't do that. That's that. Look, it don't even make sense. How did she end up with her shoe off inside of the freezer and a cut on her foot. Think about what I'm saying, y'all. If you're inside of a freezer, you're not going to be trying to take off your shoes. You're going to be trying to cover up every inch of your body. Now, I know they said they have this phenomenon called paradoxical um, undressing, whereas when people are freezing, they take off their clothes sometimes. But I'm not buying this. It's way too many things that are unexplained in this case. I believe they killed that girl. And why are the friends constantly changing their stories? Why are they changing their stories? Over and over and over again, you hear different stories about what happened. You hear different accounts of what happened. Man, the truth is the truth, and you can tell it a thousand times, it's going to come out the same way. But lies change up. A lie, you got the truth. There's only one truth. So you got the truth, and then you got a million lies. Because anything other than the truth can be told a million different ways. And that's what's happening. All of these people got different accounts of what happened. They keep changing things up. I just don't believe them. <laughs> the photos were personal, private, and indecent. If they showed the photos to the mother, and that's all that they were really concerned about. Why would they release those photos to the public? You know why they did it? Because they just wanted to be disrespectful. Because they didn't give a damn about that girl. They did it to be disrespectful. They did not have to release those photos. Not, not, they got, man, they showing the photo with the girl, all, everything open and all this stuff. They didn't have to do all of that. Maybe they could have shown one photo to show proof to the public that, yes, she died and this is what she looked like. But they, they released a series of photos. But I get you. I bet you one photo they're not going to release. I bet you they won't release that photo of her walking inside of that cooler. I bet you they won't show that. They got it. Trust me. 
Listen to what I'm saying, y'all. Pay close attention to what I'm saying. Anybody who knows anything about working inside of a restaurant, working inside of a club, or anywhere you have your money, you got your cameras. They got all of those cameras inside of that hotel. They got cameras everywhere. And you ain't got your cameras, you ain't got no camera fixated on the money. Now, granted that the, the cooler was empty, it was not being used, but it had been used previously. So you would have a camera on your money. If you're in a bar, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a camera on what? The liquor, the, the camera's gonna be on the liquor. I own clubs, so I know where you put the cameras at. You put the cameras on the liquor, you put the cameras on that cooler. Now they got cameras everywhere, but they ain't got a camera on that cooler. They lying, man. They got the camera, they got the video footage, but they won't show it because it was foul play involved and they know what the truth is. I don't believe them. I don't trust them. It's more to this story. And they're saying that the family is saying that they want them to turn the case over to the FBI. Man, do y'all realize who run the FBI? The FBI is being ran by white supremacists. Good luck with that. The bottom line is that Rosemont officials have determined Kanika Jenkins' death to be of accidental nature and a closed case. I don't believe them, but you ain't got to take my word. Do your own investigation and draw your own conclusions. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.